Hello Mariner fans, we're back for another week of Meet the Staff Monday. I'm Joe Guster, your Sports Information Director. We're joined today by Assistant Baseball Coach, our Pitching Coach, Recruiting Coordinator of our Baseball Team, Lou Bernardi. Coach Bernardi, thanks for joining us. Joe, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So, Coach Bernardi is in his third season, arriving in 2018. Came from Division One Iona, coached at multiple levels. Coach, tell us about your stops along the way. Yeah, Joe, I've been at a number of different places along the way. Uh, I'm actually entering my 10th year in college baseball as a coach. I started my coaching career back in 2011 at my alma mater, New York Tech. Um, from there, I went on, was a pitching coach at a fellow Skyline Conference opponent, SUNY Old Westbury, for three years. Uh, from there, moved up the ranks, went up to Division II LIU Post, where I was their recruiting coordinator. and. When I was there, I always wanted to get back at the Division One level. I started at New York Tech at, at the Division One level, and I knew I always wanted to reach that plateau once again. And I landed the job at Iona. I was there for two years, and this opportunity came up, and it was such an amazing thing when, when, when I learned what actually it entailed and how special this place really is. I put in for it, and uh, I, I was extremely grateful that I was given an opportunity to come here to Kings Point, um, have an opportunity to work with these midshipmen, and like you said, I'm going on my third year and we're very much looking forward to the spring and getting back on this beautiful field that we're doing this interview here today on. That's right. Bartizak Field just finishing up uh, renovations now. Coach you mentioned New York Tech. Talk about your playing days and then you know postgraduate you, you played as well and independently. Yes sir. So uh, four-year uh, letter winner at New York Tech. I was a pitcher. I was a starter. I was a reliever. Uh, closed a little bit. Finished my career in the top five in appearances. Uh, had, a, had a decent playing career. W was definitely not a superstar by any means, but uh, lucky enough, I was fortunate. And um, after my four years at New York Tech, I was able to sign an independent professional contract, and I played for the St. George Roadrunners of what was the Golden League. Spent the summer out on the West Coast, and also spent a little bit of time in the Can-Am League with the New York Federals during their exhibition and, uh, and spring season. So. Um, lo loved my playing days, had a lot, of, a lot of fond memories, a lot of really good friendships and relationships came out from my days as a player and um, I guess the, the game has given me so much that four years as a player, one year at the pro level and now, like I said earlier, entering my 10th year as a college coach, this is just something that I, I can't get out of and uh, baseball is who I am, it's my passion and it, it what keeps me going every day. Uh, talk about you know the coach you're coaching here at the academy you know the type of student athlete that you see you know what you expect from them and, and you know your recruiting coordinator as well so you know coming up the you know what you have to say to you know, any high school yeah I mean you know th this is a very unique place and out of all my stops I can honestly say that this is the best place that I've ever been um, you know the the goal here is to is to really create leaders of tomorrow it's not necessarily to win baseball games or win championships which we're very competitive on the field but at the same same token you know these kids have a much larger mission in life and and, and their vision is not just home to first um, to, to, to hear some of these players goals and to hear what they want to do after college and after their baseball career is truly tremendous so from a recruiting standpoint we're recruiting a very certain type of individual who has those leadership qualities instilled in them, who's able to work with a team, who's able to understand the regiment, who has such high academic standards, all while being a very competitive athlete on the field. So it, it's like no other athlete, it's like no other student athlete I've ever recruited at any other any one of my stops prior to here at the Merchant Marine Academy. And what I love about it too is you know all the staff members are full time. You know we get to be here pretty much around the clock, you know, and, and we do so much for the academy as well. Talk about some of your other roles uh, aside from coaching. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I do have the luxury of being an assistant teacher, an assistant instructor in two classes here um, in, in, in the physical education department. Um, I am the SAC faculty uh, liaison, which has been a great experience for me, understanding some of the inner workings of the athletic program and really getting a chance to, to talk and learn and relate to all of our student athletes and our leaders, not just from baseball, but from every single sport. and really just listen and be able to go back to our administration with ideas and try to really increase our athletic program as a whole. Yeah, you're in your uh, second full year as, uh, you know, you took over that in uh, 2019, I believe, 2019-20. Uh, so, uh, 
Stack's been doing some great stuff. I know uh, the season just started. Uh, what do you see from those uh, midshipmen from across multiple teams? You know, I'm sure they're all great athletes in their sports, but each of them are better leaders. And some of the ideas and some of the things that they bring up to us in our meetings, it, it's truly eye-opening. And knowing that we have them on our side gives us a little bit extra hope for the future, that these are the future CEOs, the future leaders, you know, of, of our country, of, of various industries. Um, you know, we're going to be in good hands knowing that these, that these midshipmen are, are, are going to be one day controlling a lot of people. Nice. And, and talk to us a little bit more of your history with baseball. You know, um, you know, do you have any team that you root for in particular or players? Or, you know? Yeah, I, you know, I don't root necessarily for any particular team. Um, you know, I'm not a diehard baseball Met fan or Yankee fan or anything like that. I've always said I root for players, and uh, I appreciate what players do and um, on, and, on and off the field. And those are the players that I gravitate towards. So whenever I watch a baseball game, I'm really not watching uh, the team per se. I'm watching individual players, and I'm rooting for their success. And, and coach, talk about you know off the field stuff. You mentioned that the players do. Uh, I, uh, you've been involved with a lot of that stuff as well. You want to talk about that. A little? I have. Yeah. You know. You know. Outside of uh, your normal working day, uh, I'm a big believer of giving back to the community and, and using your platform to promote some good and actual positive change. So I've had a chance to interact with a lot of these players on a much personal and, and intimate note uh, with various organizations and charities and foundations that I volunteered for as just a small way to give back and like I said I, I'm a big believer that if you have a platform if you can help influence something in a positive way it's your it's your obligation it's your duty to do so and um, I am fortunate I, I have been able to interact like I said with these individuals and that's why when I root for them um, I know what they're doing off the field because nowhere does it say that they have to go and volunteer or donate or give back their job is a baseball player their job is a basketball player but those individuals that go the extra mile um, I'll always appreciate what they're doing and I'll always root for them yeah, and uh, you talk about going the extra mile you know a lot of you've actually been able to bring in a couple of former players uh, you know owner of the Mets yeah, so talk to the team talk about yeah absolutely so you know under our athletic director uh, he, he created an initiative uh, excellence in athletics and it really it really stuck to us uh, coach coach Mike and I on the baseball side of things and we sat down and we wanted to figure out a way to create an educational platform and that's what it is. It's an educational platform um, in a speaker series where it gives our midshipmen an experience and an opportunity to listen, learn, and interact with some really unique and industry professionals and some amazing individuals. And, you know, we did bring in Mr. Sol Katz, who I do have a relationship with outside of the academy. Um, he, you know, he's the past president and, and owner of the Mets. Um, last year we were down in Florida. We had Burke Blylevin, an MLB Baseball Hall of Famer, one of the greatest right-handed pitchers, arguably, of all time, talk to our kids. Um, you know, the names go on. We had Cliff Floyd talk to our players about diversity and, and using your platform again to promote some good and change in the community. Um, Jim Laird, two-time World Series champion, uh, World Series hero, spoke to our kids about always being ready and, and, and knowing where you are at the moment. Art Shamsky spoke to our kids. He was a 1969 Met. Spoke to our players about being a professional and carrying yourself the right way on and off the field. So it's something we're going to continue to do. And it's not just from an athletic standpoint. Last week, um, we had the former Chief Justice of the Georgia State Supreme Court, Justice Lee, Sears, Lee, Lee Sears Ward, talk to our players. And she did a phenomenal job. So we're going to continue to bring all walks of life to the academy, whether it's Zoom or in person, and really give our midshipmen an opportunity to learn, listen, and, and ask hard questions to people that have been there before and who have been very successful. That is excellent stuff. I, I've been a big fan of that. I was there when uh, Jim Larrett spoke, and you know, the message is great. Uh, it's good to hear from these professionals that, that are willing to give back as well. So I uh, just want to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll close it up with this. You know, it seems to be a favorite uh, uh, on the meet staff. Uh, tell me your favorite movies, whether it's baseball, you know, favorite sports movies. Favorite, all right, so we'll go baseball. Favorite sport movies. One or can I give a few? You can give a couple. So I'm a big fan of For the Love of the Game. Um, I, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's a nice story. So For the Love of the Game it has to be up there. There's got to be a tie for second with 
the rookie, which is a true story, great story. Jimmy Morris, left-handed pitcher, 40-year-old high school coach, making it to the big leagues. Um, Bull Durham, I think, has to be on every list. And if I had to pick one favorite baseball movie, I would go Field of Dreams. Yeah, Field of Dreams, and every time I watch it, I get I get goosebumps. And we'll finish. I got a little story. Um, in the summer of 2014, I'm coaching out in the Northwoods League, very prestigious collegiate summer league. Um, I'm the associate head coach for the Thunder Bay Border Cats up in uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Wow. And we're doing a two-game road series. We're up in down in Waterloo, Iowa, and about an hour an hour west of Waterloo was Dyersville, Iowa, which is where the actual Field of Dreams movie set is. It's an actual field. It's not a movie set. People don't realize that people live there. That was a house. So me and my other coach, we thought it would be a nice idea, unrelated to the kids. Let's throw the movie on, and let's say we're, we're, driving, we're driving to dinner. So we're driving to dinner. We're watching the movie, and it, it was just somehow perfectly in sync. We're driving down the same road where in the movie there's a car driving down the same road. That car turns down the driveway into the house to see the field. We drive at the exact same time down that driveway into the field and it was just a surreal moment where at that moment in time every one of our kids was looking out the window and then looking back at the TV and every one of them got goosebumps. So it was really a cool moment and every time I watch Field of Dreams you know it puts a huge smile on my face. It brings me back to that moment in time where it was like Time almost stood still. Wow. And, um, you know, I'll always have that personal connection to Field of Dreams. We all got out of the bus. We walked around. We walked through the cornfields. We had to catch. We, we took some BP. Um, and it was a really surreal moment that, you know, baseball has given me so many opportunities. I've been able to visit 48 out of 50 states and three countries wow. because of the game of baseball. It's taken me to so many places. So, you know, like I said, 10 years as a coach, Four years in college, one year at the professional level, and uh, lifelong memories, people that I've been able to interact with, and, and a network that really is, is, is there um, at my disposal, and it's because of this game of baseball. So, you know, I, I am grateful for every opportunity that has come my way because of it. Yeah, and we're grateful to have you and, and all that you bring to our midshipmen. So that's, that's, that's a wrap for this week's Meet the Staff Monday. Mariner fans, now you know more about assistant baseball coach Lou Bernardi. Coach, thanks a lot. Thanks, Joe.